Good morning, everyone. I'm sure you can see everything here. Does that look good? If I step in, we've got enough space. I think I could bring it just a little closer into here. There you go, okay. I'm putting on my earbuds. Let's see if this makes this good. Load up, thanks so much for being here. It's Pat Gross. What a surprise, Pat. It's always great to see you here. Hope you can hear me well as well. Um, I just wanna just make sure that I can get the best angle here. I think we can tilt it down just a little bit. Hey, Rosa, good to see you, mum. We can just go in here. Let's see how that is for size. I think I can actually pull that in just a little closer. Look at all this technical ability that's going on here. There you go. I think that's probably the best size that we're gonna to get today. So it should be good. Let me grab this. I've also got my water standing by. Hey, Pat. We've got a couple of minutes until the class starts. I've got something else I can do as well. Apart from you hearing me drink my water. Watch this. I can actually clean the camera lens. That should have thrown you off. But look how much cleaner that looks now. That goes to show you how dirty our phones get, right? Well, right now there's mum and Pat, two of my favorite people in the world. My mum obviously being my favorite. But uh, great to see you here. I'm just going to put this back inside. Now today, got a very basic class in here. Um, you know, Tuesdays are always my, my uh, favorite basic classes because we really get back to how the board works, why it works, how it was created in the very first um, place. And um, going back to the basics, you know how much I love. Um, <laughs> um, I just saw some comments in there. Um, but you know how much I love going back to the basics. This is what makes this life changing, tapping into the brain, letting the brain feel those pressure points. And again, I've explained it before, and you can see the, the today's class is flapping around. Um, but again, think back to when a baby was born and trying to learn to walk. You didn't take it to a gym to learn how to walk. You didn't go and work on muscles to help the baby learn to walk. It stood up on its own and then would fall and stand and fall. And eventually over time, they'd learn how to stand and then take the first step and fall. And all that was happening during that time was the brain was developing the pressure point feeling of where do I need to apply my pressure to stand? And then they'd fall as they move because they hadn't developed that skill. See, the brain is what governs your balance. I had to change the whole way that I used to train. I used to train the opposite way. Let's strengthen the body to get the balance. But the muscles work with the skeletal structure. They don't work with the balance itself. It comes from the cerebellum at the back of the brain. And that is where the messaging goes through your spinal column. And the neurological pathways are what's sending the messages of what I want to do and the body sending messages back to the brain, what's happening so the brain can adjust and adapt. The strength that we add to that gives you endurance, it gives you the um, stamina, it gives you the ability to um, do endurance athletics or just do what you want to be able to do. That's what the muscles bring and the strength to be able to last longer on the activities that you're doing. So strength is really important, but don't confuse the ability of the brain and the pathways to the messaging that gives you the balance and gives you what's even more important once you've got your balance is the ability for the brain to think on its own again because you've created those pathways. And that's what makes it so exciting is that you'll find yourself reacting again without even thinking about it because the brain and the mind are two different things. You don't want to be thinking about it to do it. You want the brain to react just on its own natural abilities. The way that I can explain that very simply you're walking down the street, you're looking at a, a, uh, something very simply, I can't even talk. You're walking down the street, you're looking in a shop window, you're friends with you, you're talking to your friend about what's in the shop window and how great that looks and, and you're walking by, but you're not thinking about your balance. See, your balance is taking care of itself when the brain is trained. So today, Tuesday, is brain training as we know. Um, hey, great to see you all here. Um, Pat, great to see you here. I already said hi to Pat. Molly Ann, thanks so much for being here as well. Mum, 
you feel so much better now after cleaning the screen. Um, I'm glad you cleaned your screen. Uh, you should always clean your screen, Mum. Thanks. Good morning, Kirk and everybody. Um, Kirk, you were messing with me the other day. I got it in for you, mate. Um, I hope you got the red hooks. Um, I did send you a private message to make sure that uh, you got that stuff in there. So again, let me know uh, what's going on. Betsy, great to see you here. I hope everybody enjoyed Thursday's workout outside down in uh, Irvine. It was a really fun day for us and um, a lot of distractions and interactions going on. So it's great. Um, Mum, you said I walked at 12 months and then promptly held onto the piano um, so that you could kick a football. That's a soccer ball to uh, the Americans. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and soccer has been a huge part of my life, of my whole of my life. But that was my first thing. Uh, Denise, great to see you here from Arizona. Yes, you are looking good. Go take a check in the mirror. You're looking amazing. Um, Kirk, I'm glad you got them. Thanks so much for letting me know. Um, so again, Tuesday's classes. Look, look how beautiful it is today. I can hear the birds in the background singing. Um, and we haven't had any crows come out yet and start squawking, which uh, isn't quite as pretty a sound, but it still means we're alive when you can hear things we're living, which is great. Um, and today's class, like I said, is very, very basic, extremely basic. So for those of you that are more um, advanced, one of the things that I'll challenge you to do is you feel really safe is let go with one hand on any of the exercises you're doing. And some of them, I've actually got them where I've let go with both hands. But again, safety is always first. Always have those poles um, in a place and a position to be able to uh, <coughs> use them. Sorry, I just got a frog in my throat. I've got all the birds out here and a frog's in my throat. Hang on. So again, safety is always first. Don't do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. And one of the best ways to learn to let go of the poles and trust your balance is to just hold them so lightly that you can still feel them against your skin. That's your proprioceptive connection telling you I can still feel them, but you're not really holding on. So if you need to, you can hold on very quickly. Again, it's incredibly important that you go at your own pace, that you have your own safety mechanisms, that you allow yourself to challenge. When I was training this lady, one day I'll talk about... Um, an actress that you'll see in a new movie coming up. Um, we actually took the poles out at one point and she was doing all the exercises without even having the poles there. Uh, I don't recommend that to anybody that's on their own. One thing that I did, I stood in front and have my hands there so at any point she could grab my hands. Um, but the confidence that grew from scared of getting on the board to holding onto the poles, to letting go of the poles, to taking the poles out was unbelievable. And that was that was in under, what, seven days so uh, really proud of her. Um, uh, there's a question here from Denise. What's the difference from holding the bands with the hand forward uh, or holding them with the hand backwards? You need to know what uh, works better or why. Okay, that's a great question. Um, it all depends on the um, exercise that you're doing. So for example, and I'll give you a quick example. If I'm doing a bicep curl, and I've got my hand facing forward and I'm bending up, I'm really working mainly the bicep muscle and I'm working a little bit of the front of the forearm too. If I put my hand back and try to do it this way, now I'm putting a little bit of a strain on the elbow in here. I'm working more the back of the, of the forearm and also it's gonna give you a little bit more stress or pressure on the back of your wrist. Um, I don't really do those ones in that way. Turning it sideways can be a good way because we work slightly the width of the bicep. Now, one of the exercises you may be thinking of is a tricep. So when I go into this position here and I straighten my arm back into this area, I'm working again the back of the tricep. As soon as I turn my arm and go into here, you'll feel a change in how the muscle works. And now we're working the front of the forearm in here instead of working through really more of the tricep area. Also, when you turn your hand backwards, what we're doing here is we're changing the angle of the wrist. And again, it gives a slightly different contraction into the tricep. So what I suggest in there is try both ways and see which one feels um, more comfortable and you get the best contraction of the muscle we're focusing on. So it's a great question, Denise. Now you gotta remember, as a bodybuilder, they'll look to define certain areas of the muscle because they want to bring out the 
um, the shape of the muscle, the striations. But when you start thinking about where we are in life and doing things in, in regular life, we just want to strengthen the muscle area because it's not about looks. It's about being able to be functional and use it and strength will do that. And then as we start getting uh, you know, our strength back, then we can decide do we want to go into body sculpting and make those muscles more defined, which would depend on the hand area. All the exercises that I do, um, I tend to do it in the most comfortable position and not the one where we have to start being a little bit more joint activated awareness uh, because of obviously the, uh, the need to protect the joints as well. And as we know, and it's a common thing throughout the fitness industry, the bands give you a much better and safer workout than lifting weights um, because of the fluidity and the natural expansion of the bands. The other thing is as well, the more you you stretch the band, the tougher the resistance gets. You can go to a level that feels comfortable for you as well. Um, so hope that was good. Larry, here we go, Larry. Did you know that more crows are killed by cars than trucks? That's because they can't warn by calling cause but can't say truck. Larry, I think you've been hanging out with Bob. Bob Eubanks. Bob, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, Bob. Look at what Larry just said. <laughs> but, um, but Bob, that might be a, a joke that you two, you two should hang out together in the bathroom, I'm telling you, and just exchange. Actually, I have to get careful how I say that. But, you know, go just hang out playing golf and everything. So, um <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Uh, Bob, good to see you here. Thanks so much for being here as well. I had a uh, fun or a long weekend, I should say, and it's great to be back here. There's Tammy. Tammy just got her board. Tammy, thanks so much. She set up one of the 60 up for her clients. She has a gym that she works with um, as the director of um, and her own clients as well and board a board and is set up so that they can come and do these exercises at her um, fantastic location. So thanks so much as well. Um, great to see you here, Tammy. Today is very, very simple uh, brain training. Uh, Ildi, great to see you here. Good morning to you too. Thanks so much and really um, hope that you enjoy this workout. Again, remember, this is very simple, but don't, don't confuse simple with ineffective. Sometimes we go out and I can go out on a bike ride and um, until all those years ago, and I can go really, really tough for an hour and a half and be dripping in sweat, or I can go out for a three hour bike ride and be almost no sweat at all. And I'd always say that the one that I'm working hardest at was the one that got the most effect. But I forgot to realize that that long term ability sitting in the saddle gave me the preparation to be able to go faster later. And it's the same thing here. Think about we're training the brain to feel the body and the body messaging to go up and back. And that will give you the stamina, confidence and strength to be able to do the more dynamic things that you want to do in life. So don't confuse the Tuesday class. Glad that really helps, Denise. And with that being said, let's get on with the workout because I've talked a lot today, but I really appreciate. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say. And that's not surprising, right? I've always got things to say. Please send me things that you want me to work on because as I'm planning these classes, my favorite classes are the ones where I've got topics from you the turn around because I, then I know I'm helping you particular. For example, Denise, um, asking that, um, asking that uh, question gave me something that I know that I can share information that will help you all out. Um, so again, I think I'm going to be going back to the Tuesday once a month class where you come and bring the questions and I just create things there and then. But please leave messages with things because I can do better classes when I know what I want, what you want me to help you with. All right, let's step back. I would tell you, Mum, thanks so much for the Skanar machine. I couldn't even walk properly yesterday. Um, and was able to give myself a treatment with that. And I know you're a huge proponent and seen incredible results over the years. Um, I remember when you treated me back in England, just rock side to side. I remember when you treated me back in England um, after a soccer game and I couldn't even walk and you used the machine on me and I ran five miles the next day. Today, you can see I'm moving okay. Um, I was very, very, I didn't know if I'd be able to do the class today, to be honest, because my ankle's been so bad. But feeling good. And because it's you and everyone there, this is where I dig in and say, I'm here to help you. And that gives me a new energy as well. Okay, come and stand in the center. All I want you to do is start, put your hands on top. Just hold on, unless you're uncomfortable and put them at the side. So I'm gonna be here. Just tap the right foot behind number one, left foot behind number one. 
What's crazy, I could feel because of my slight ankle weakness, I can tell how when I step um, onto my right foot to lift my left, I can really feel how I'm having to really cognitively be aware of my pressure points on my right foot because they didn't naturally go into the right position because my ankle, again, has a little bit of weakness in here. So I just go a little bit slower. Okay, last one. Now let's go on to, we're gonna tap one, then we're gonna tap one, two, and then we're gonna tap one, two, three without the foot coming to the ground. So we tap one, we tap one, two, we tap one, two, three, and bring it down. Left leg, tap one, lift, one, two, lift, one, two, three, bring it to the ground. Tap one, lift. Tap one, two, lift. Tap one, two, three. And the easy way to think of those, if, if you don't want to look down, think right ahead, lift, right ahead inside the pole, right ahead inside the pole, outside the pole, and down. So straight ahead, straight ahead inside the pole, straight ahead inside, outside the pole, and down. Left leg, here we go. One, one, two, one, two, three. We do this two more times each side. And I want you to think about this as you're doing this. Think about how the pressure point on the leg that you're standing on is changing as you're moving your foot. I can feel how my pressure points begin to go more to the middle toe the wider my foot goes. Last time through. One, two. And one, two, three. Bring it down. Last one. One, one, two. And one, two, three bring it down. That's awesome. So what we're going to do here now is, a, is the next exercise that's to do with tapping. And again, we're going really slow because again, I want to, the brain to have time to feel the pressure point. Step your right foot on toe, on toe, on two. Tap your left foot on two and step back down again. Left foot, you step on two, tap on two, step back down. Now what I want you to do, and this is great for the feeling of neuropathy, as well in here, step up, we step up. What's happening is because of the connection with the, with the cerebellum, as you tap, you're reacting. So we're creating here the ability for the brain to feel what the body's feeling and react. As soon as I feel like myself touch the board, I'm stepping back down again. So I touch and I'm back down. And we step, I touch and we're back down. So you don't push heavy. As soon as you feel that tap, you're going back. I feel the tap. So this is no different. Uh, one more time, each side going here, right side and left. This is no different than putting your hand under hot water and pulling it away because we have that feeling. Last one, tap and pull away. There you go. Good. What I want you to do now is step up on one and one and just rock side to side. Now to rock, I want you to push your hip, push your hip push your hip. Now, for those of you that are confident, just put your thumbs on top of the poles. The poles are there for you to be able to grab. But again, this is the confidence of what we're doing. There you go. Just nice and easy. Now to multitask, tap your fingers on each rock. So when it touches the side, touch the side, touch the side. So now we're coordinating movement with the brain's creativity to be able to say every time the board touches the ground, I'm tapping another finger. Now, for those of you that are holding on to the poles, you can do this just by holding on and just taking one finger off. So I could be like this, here, there, for those of you that feel more. So again, we're multitasking the brain to work together, but you're working independently because your hands won't work uh, with your feet without you sending the messages there. And last one, there you go, good. Now, what I want you to do is find the, the balance position in the middle. Now, what's interesting for me is that because of my weak ankle and the way that I've had to adjust my leg to try and take the pressure off, and we all do that. That's why sometimes when you get a knee problem, you get a back problem because your back is trying to take the pressure. I can feel the different pressure points on my right foot. And I wanna try and bring my body back into alignment. Now, what we're gonna do once you've found your balance, put your butt back, go into a small squat. Go with me here. Now, as you stand up, lift your left foot. So you stand up and lift. Now find your balance straight away. 
push your butt back, go into a small squat, hold that balance. Now push down with the left leg, lift the right. So the whole thing that we're doing in here, I'm just checking my foot placement. We're going from balance to squat. Now push with the right foot, lift the left here and come straight back into that balance again. And squat. Now push with the left, lift the right. Here, can you find that balance straight away, bringing that foot back down? And squat. And lift the left leg. Boom. Come back, find that balance straight away. And squat. Right leg lift. Right leg, come back. Find that balance point. And again, go squat. Now, what we're doing here is we're learning to lift and how quickly can we find that balance? Now, the cool thing about the 60 up balance board is that no matter where you put your foot, go into a squat, go lift the right leg. Now, come back and find that balance immediately. Now, I was saying what the cool thing about the 60 up balance board, we're going to lift the left leg on this one, going to the squat, is no matter where you bring your foot back to, even if it's slightly off, you're learning pressure points to be able to find that balance because you're engaging the brain channels to feel. Here we go again. Go back, squat. Now lift the right leg. Lift and come back and find that balance. We're working so many muscles here as well. Go into the squat. Think about it. We're working our thigh muscles. We're working our pressure point. You can feel the ankles and the calves. I'm using my glutes. Now lift the left leg. As I lift, I'm working the hip flexor. And now I come back and find that balance. So what we're going to do now, just to finish this one up, we're going to go four more times. Go into a squat. Now let go with your right hand if you feel comfortable. Now lift your right leg. Here, come back, find your balance. Good. Change hands. Let go with the left hand if you feel comfortable. Go back. Squat. Now lift your left leg. You'll feel the board rock. Come back, find that balance straight away. Now, for both of, for those of you that want to go to the next level, we're going to do this with no hands, but please go at your own pace um, and your own confidence. Use both hands or one hand. Here we go. We're going to go into a little squat. Now, slowly, because we, we're uh, doing this one, lift your left leg here. Remember the poles are there. Come back. Find your balance. Go into a little squat. Last one. Push down with the left. Lift the right. Come back. Find that balance. Good. Grab hold of the poles. Push down with your right foot. Step back with your left. And just shake those legs out. Great job. There was a lot of work. Grab a quick drink of water. I'm going to see some of the messages that came in. And, uh, and we're going back into here. Um, I'm glad that helped, Denise, that explanation. Thank you. Debbie, it's a lot nicer there today. Um, hey, it's a beautiful day. It's been a beautiful weekend. I hope... Um, you're doing well down in, in uh, Colorado. I know it's such a mixture of weather. The weather report last night did say that it's going to be really bad cold weather coming back in again. And they haven't seen this constant variation. The rain's going to be coming in and the drop in temperature. But I'm so lucky. Um, look at where we live in a little bit of rain. Now, I love the rain growing up in England. Bob, you'll be back later. Where are you going, Bob? Bathroom time? <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next exercise. Here we go. Step up on two and two. All I want you to do is, and again, so basic. Remember, this is about feeling. This is not about exercise. This is not about the massive challenge of um, the massive challenge of how difficult can I make it. This is about the simple challenge of how great can I do to build the messaging and fill my pressure points. Okay, what I want you to do, for those of you that are comfortable enough, and again, feel the pressure in your feet, take your right hand off. There you go, and start building that confidence of you don't need the poles. It's still here if you want to grab it, but nice and easy, there you go. Now, change hands, take your left hand off. You got it. Now, for those of you that feel comfortable enough, put your thumbs on top and not holding on. And again, if you want to hold on, again, one of the things to do here is just push slowly. So instead of going fast, you can feel the change and feel how strong you are. Feel how strong those feet are. There you go. Good. You're doing great. Now, 
those of you that are really comfortable enough, take your thumbs off, keep your hands here, and just feel the pressure point of rocking. And you can get a little bit of press if you begin to feel really comfortable. Don't overdo it, don't go crazy in here. I know Bob will put his roller skates on and start doing the class with roller skates because Bob was a champion roller skater and I'm being serious. He was training for the Olympics and then they pulled it out of the Olympics um, as an event. But again, go nice and easy. Now, what I want you to do, if you feel comfortable, one hand, two hands or no hands, find your balance. And notice how I want you to feel the pressure in your toes and your heels because that will govern your forward and backward motion. So you're not leaning back. Keep the pressure points with pressure on both the ball of the foot and the toes. Feel the toes slightly pushing into the board and the heels. So again, your skeletally, the structure is um, set right through the middle. Your knees are slightly bent. Now what I want you to do is stay in the, that same pressure point with the balls of the feet and the heels, but rock side to side. If you find you're going fast and the poles obviously flex, you can put your hands right here so that as it rocks, your hand stops it from that sound of the going side to side. If you have metal poles, you don't have to worry because they're not going to flex. There you go. Good. Now, keeping the pressure on the toes and the heels, now find your balance. Now that you've got the pressure on your toes and your heels and you feel those toes a little bit you know, pushing into the board, what I want you to do now is feel your pressure on your little toe, big toe, and down the outside front of your feet and the inside front of your feet. Because if we've got the balance forward and back good, we're now controlling our side to side balance with the pressure points on the outside and inside of the feet. There you go, good. And go and rock again. Like I said, very, very simple. This is an exercise that's great to do watching TV at nighttime. You can be holding on. But while you're watching TV and just rocking, you're not really thinking about your pressure points. And this is where, as I said at the beginning of class, the brain thinks independently from the mind. Now find your balance. There you go. Good. And this is what you'll do when commercials are on. Find that balance. And if the commercials are on, your back, you can just do little knee bends in here, feeling how the pressure points change a little bit to support the body. Now, remember, when you're doing knee bends, that your butt's going back and your knees are bending. Your knees are not going forward. Let that butt go slightly back. Keep the pressure points on the toes, on the ball of the foot, and feeling the pressure as you rock on the inside and outside of the feet. Good. Come back, put your hands on. Just lift those legs and stepping side to side. The reason I like this one holding onto the poles is it gives that sense of um, confidence and safety stability. But the other thing is as well, I want you to lift up through the top of your head so we work on the posture. Pull those shoulders back and the poles give you a sense of where you are to be able to stand upright and feel really calm instead of hunched over slightly because we're not using the poles. Stand upright, feel tall, pull those shoulders back and we're just loosening up the legs. Excellent, great job. All right, what I want you to do, push down with the right leg, step back with the left. Just shake those legs out. Again, this is fantastic pressure point training. Grab a little bit of water. I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday who, um, <laughs> that's so funny. I just saw a comment from you, Jenny Bale. First off, I hope you're doing great after um, going into hospital and uh, getting, uh, I think it was your knee. Was it your knee or your hip getting that done? It's great to see you here. Um, and I can see what you're saying, Jenny Bale. So you said, ah, oh, bless him with his little odd shoes. First off, they're size 23s. Well, a little exaggeration there. But um, Jenny, the reason I have, good morning, Patrick. Great to see you here. Um, one of the reasons I wear the, the, the shoes that way, Jenny, is because for those following, the red shoe is my right foot and the blue shoe is my left foot. And so if you get lost on which we're doing, especially if we stand sideways and I move one leg back, you can see if it's the right shoe or if it's the left shoe that I'm moving. So it helps. Um, but I will tell you, I did forget to change my shoes when I went to the market and uh, people were looking at me funny. I guess I'm having to think, OK, I want to walk forward. Use your right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. I use these actually for disco dancing as well because I go disco here, disco there. Just go here and we can just do our little, okay, 
Anyway, moving right back on again. That's a little bit too much information. Patrick, great to see you here. Um, okay, the next exercise we want to do, we're going to work on single leg balance. I know this is a big thing where people begin to feel unstable. And that's because, again, the pressure points and strengthening up the muscles in the leg once we feel the stress, the pressure points. Take your right foot and put it right in the middle of the board. Now, what I want you to do is take your left foot and put it on the number three. So you'll feel that you're leaning number three. Come to the middle, lift the left leg, step down. Come to the middle, lift the leg, come to the middle. And even if you find yourself rocking, you're working to find the middle. Push down with here and come back up and find that middle. There you go, good, and push back down now. This one, because of my ankle injury, I can really feel um, my pressure points because I'm trying not to use the ligaments in my ankle and give that area a rest. And it's actually by gripping my thigh muscles, my knee slightly bent, um, and again, I'm feeling strong, lifting up, I can feel the pressure points in my right foot and correct. There you go, good. Step your left foot on two, right foot on two, put your left foot right in the middle of the board. Take your right foot, put it to number three, and now we're gonna work the other side. Step and try and find that, that balance right in the middle. Now, one of the things that will help is make sure the middle of your foot is over the red mark in the middle. There you go, excellent. Press down, and <laughs> I'm still laughing, Jenny. When are you gonna see my mum again? You guys have to get together. You know what's interesting about Jenny as well? Jenny comes from Bournemouth, and her son went to the same school that I went to. And all these years later, I didn't even know Jenny and found out she was one of my mum's best friends. My mum's always talked so good about Jenny. And so it's great to see you here all the way from England as well. Are you ready? Here we go. It's funny that both your sons ended up at the same school and uh, none of us even knew each other from that place. Here we go. One more time. Step down, step up and find that balance. Now, this is such a great exercise um, for if you're wanting to be able to stand up, stand on one leg. Put your left foot on two, right foot on two. Now we're going to do another little exercise here which is an advancement. Put your right foot on the middle board. Now, I'm gonna take this one careful because of my injury on my left, on my right ankle, but I'm gonna try and do it. Bring up, find the balance. And when you found the balance, take off one hand and see how you react. Notice how your pressure points slightly change. Good, step down with the right foot, sorry, left foot. Come back on the right, start to find your balance, lift up and take one hand off and see if you can maintain that balance if you want to. You can take the second hand off, keep your hands close, and see if you can find that balance. Now, I can feel this one. I'm not going to do this one, but that's for those of you that are more advanced. Come and stand up. I could feel, as soon as I took both hands off, more of the stabilization dynamics through my ankle. And I want to remove that right now so I'm not stressing the ligaments or tendons. But if I didn't have the injury, absolutely, I'll be doing this exercise without holding on. That's the beauty of the poles they can help assist. Good, put your right foot, left foot on number two. Take your right foot on number two, bring your left foot to the middle. Now I'm gonna be doing this one. Take your right foot to number three, and I'll do this one. So stand up, come to the middle, take one hand off, and take the other hand off. If you feel coming, remember the poles are still there, and you can always put your foot back down if you begin to feel unstable. Good, take your foot to number three, come back, see if you can find that balance. And on this side, it's interesting. Obviously, my body is working the same as my right side would be working, but because I don't have an injury on my left ankle, I don't notice how much my ankle is working. Obviously, it is, so I'm naturally strengthening it. Step down again. But because the injury on my right ankle was there, it really let me know that there was a pain that was going on. So I know how much it's working, and you've got to listen to your injuries, all of you. If you're out there and you begin to feel a pain, then be smart and make the exercise easier and more simple. Good, place your right foot on two, left foot on two, and let's just rock it out. Now, what I want you to do is on every single um, push, we're gonna lift the leg. So I lift my right leg, now turn it 45 degrees. Now lift my leg, turn it 45 degrees. Now lift my leg, put it front, front. So all we're doing is we're strengthening up the change in pressure points, as well as beginning to loosen up the hip, 
by having replicating different steps. I'm going to go to the right. Oh, nope. I'm going to go to the left. Nope. I'm going to go straight forward. So again, we're replicating real life movement that allows us to have freedom in life and not be governed by our balance, but have our balance there to help support our life. There you go. Good. So we're just walking through here. I see my mum just wrote something back and I see the word Jenny on there. I hope they're not revealing things about their sons because that's the beauty of what happens at high school stays at high school. Oh, no, it doesn't. I remember a couple more times the first day I went to school. It's called Bournemouth Grammar School. It was a school for higher education back in Bournemouth in England. And just keep walking through this one. It's a, it's a funny little story. And there's 1,300 boys. It's a boys-only higher education school they have in England. And um, and it was my first day there. Come and stand, put your feet on two and two, find that balance. Good. So I've got to find my balance, put my feet on two and two. So in, at that school, everyone wore a, gr a gray suit, a shirt, the tie. I had the cap. You had the sweater or jumper in there with a little V-neck. But you'd either wear shorts or long pants, depending on the day. And everyone had to wear black or brown shoes. And it's my first day at the school. I'm 10 years old and I'm showing up and I'm like so scared. You remember, everyone remembers going to school, right? You remember your first day going to high school, how scared you were? This was a school that went from 10 years all, all the way to 18. You didn't change schools and graduate from there. And I show up and there's thousands and thousands, it felt like, of all these guys that look so big. And my mum's sitting in the car and... Good, just rock side to side. My mum's sitting in the car and as I'm walking away, trying to be like the man, trying to think I'm grown up but so scared, my mum suddenly grabs my panda and puts it out the window and goes, bye, Danny, bye, Danny, with my panda, the same one that Bob Eubanks had in class the other day that I still have on my sofa out front. And my mum's laughing. I was mortified. I'm still going to get my mum back one day. I don't know how yet, but mum, you remember that story? I've obviously impacted on my life. It, uh, <laughs> I've never forgotten it. Okay, what I want you to do is push down with the left foot, step back off. Now, one of the things that we were doing there when I was telling the story and asking you to rock is you're listening to my story, and I did it on purpose. Notice how you're listening to my story, but you're naturally rocking side to side. That's separating the brain from the mind, the thought from the action of the brain and controlling the body, so it becomes part of that brain-body training. You can do things without thinking about it when it comes to balance and pressure points. So next exercise we're going to do this one. There's two exercises left to do today. Again, very simple. I'm going to pull the board back a little bit so you can see what I want you to do is turn sideways. Now step up with your right foot closest to the front of the board, left foot behind. Now, all you're going to do is take your right foot and put it on the number three. So we're kind of, or you can put both hands on the poles or you can hold on here if you want. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to work on stepping down off of a sidewalk. So you're going to step down your left foot on front. Then you're going to step back together. We're just going to do that much so far. So step down, step back. And think about it. When you step forward, all your weight, bend your knees, all your weight's on your right leg. Then you transfer to the left and you're back again. So I'm here and I'm back. And I'm here and I'm back. Now we're going to add to this. I want you to take your left foot to the back, feel the board, rock it back, push back, keep your body upright, step, now come down, step up, step back, rock forward, step down, step up, rock back, rock forward, step down. And what you're really doing here is constantly changing the pressure points on one foot at a time into here good now if you want to you can just stay here as we rock back and step down but for those of you confident step back rock forward step off the sidewalk step up so it's almost like we're stepping forward we're going down off of a step and we feel so solid on that leg come back last time step step down now from there bring the right foot down and let's walk around to the back we're gonna do the same to the left Step up with your left foot closest to the front, right foot here by the side. Now step your left foot forward. Now bring the right leg next to it. Now step your right leg forward and bring it back. 
and step your right foot forward and bring it back and feel how strong that left leg is to control your body weight until you transfer the weight onto the right leg. There you go. And down and back. Last one, go down. Now, if you want to stay doing that one, for those of you that want to advance it, take the right foot back, make sure it's on the board, rock. Now step, step off, come back, feel the board, rock it back, step forward, step down, step up, rock it back, go forward, step down. Good. So again, we're taking, we're going from one step, we're stepping forward, we're going down the step, we're pushing back, we're rocking. So again, we're feeling that body angle, we're strong. We rock, we change our weight balance, we're strong. We step down, and again, go at your own pace. If you want to go slower, go slower. If you want to go a little faster, feel free. But remember, safety is always first. This is brain training to feel the different pressure points. No different than when my mom said I was 12 months old and, and uh, trying to kick a soccer ball. All I wanted to do was feel those pressure points so I could kick the ball and break the window. <laughs> okay, last one. I broke a few windows in my time. Good, step forward now, step the other leg off of the board and come back to the front. So again, very, very simple exercises. I'm bringing this forward now. Very simple exercises. But again, training slowly the ability to control the body and feel pressure points. Okay, we're gonna go on to, um, we're gonna go on to the final exercise. But before you do, please grab a drink of water. And again, don't forget, how crazy good these exercises are to prepare you for Kathy's classes, for Debbie's classes. Because the stronger your foundation is like when I play the piano, I still go back and do my scales, even though I can play, because I want to keep my fingers prepared and supple enough and strong enough to be able to move them on the keys. It's the same here, the basic, simple movement of your body and your feet in conjunction with actual choreographed movements to become safe and solid and feel strong is so important for the freedom to let go. Okay, I see my mum wrote about Jenny. I'll get to that one after in here, mum. Okay, last exercise. All I want you to do is just bend your knees. So you're on the floor. We're going to bend the knees. Your butt is back. Don't push your knees forward. Your butt goes back. You're into here. Now stand up. And again, butt goes back and stand up. And again, butt goes back and stand up. Now, when we do this one now, we're going to advance this. Take your right leg back and go back and stand up. Now, left leg goes back and stand up. And right leg goes back and stand up. Last time, leg goes back, stand up. Now, we're going to advance this. We're going to take it. Just watch for a second. Leg goes back. You're going to step up on one and we're going to run for 10 seconds. Then we'll step back down. Then we're going to do a knee bend. A leg back, straight into a step, a step, a step up, a step up, and then we're going to run. Are you ready? So we're going to start now with the knee bend. I'll go slow to begin with. Here we go. Both knees, stand, right leg back, step straight up onto number one, and let's go for a little run. There you go. Good. So we're getting a little bit of that activation of the fast twitch muscle fibers and getting those feet to react quickly. Good. Step back down with the left leg on the floor. Here we go. Butt goes back. Small knee bend. Stand up. Left leg goes back. Knee bend. Now straight up onto number one. And let's go for that little run again. There you go. Good. You're doing fantastic. Good. Step back with the right leg. Back in here. Knee bend. Stand up. Right leg goes back. Now from here, straight up onto number one. And let's go running. That marathon is coming up. Good. Three seconds. Two, one. Step back with the left leg. Come into the knee bend. We bend. We step up. Leg goes back. Step up. And there you go, running again. Awesome. And you're going to step back with your right leg in three, two, one. Step back, right leg. Step down. Knee bend, this is the last one on the right leg. 
Right leg goes back, step straight up. Let's run. And for those of you that haven't done the running before, you can just lift your heels and just push and go a little bit faster that way without even lifting your feet if you don't want to. Here we go, step back with the left leg. Right leg comes back, bend, up you come. Take the left leg back, last run. Step straight up on the board and let's run it out. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And come and step back down, right foot on the floor, left foot. Grab a quick drink of water and we're gonna come back for the cool down. Please stay with me for the cool down because it's so important to stretch and make sure that we're loosening up any muscles that we were just there, uh, we just worked on. Okay, so first one, shake the legs out. Let the muscles relax. When you shake your legs, let the ankle be loose. Let the knees be loose. It's almost like you're trying to make that leg into a noodle as far as it's just nice and loose. The reason you wanna do that is to let the muscles relax. If you can't relax the muscles, it makes it so much harder to stretch. Okay, push the ball to the right hand side. You put the ball of the foot on the back edge of the board, push the heel to the ground and just feel that stretch. Now again, because of my ankle, I'm not pushing this too much. It's where I feel the stretch in the calf. But if I begin to feel the stretch in my ankle too much, I'm just gonna stand back a little bit so I don't push so much onto it. Here we go, change sides. Put the ball of the foot on the edge of the board, push the heel to the ground and just push forward. I'm keeping my front leg straight because I want to work higher up the calf. If I bend my knee slightly, I'll start getting the stretch closer down to the Achilles. So again, you can adjust your stretch for where you feel you want it the most. Let's go back to the right side one time. There you go. And the closer you bring the foot to the middle of the board, the greater the stretch. If I don't want to have quite as much stretch, I'll put it closer to the edge and it's such a slight stretch. And the more I bring my foot in, the more the stretch really gets into that calf. And again, I'm going to keep my leg straight because I want the higher part of the calf stretched. I want to try and again, not interfere too much with my Achilles right now. Left foot, ball goes in there, feel the stretch, heel goes to the ground. There you go, awesome and come and step back. Good, next one I want you to do, take your feet about two and two wide. I want you to just bend forward, keep the legs straight, and then roll. Your, your feet stay flat, but make sure the pressure is on the ball of your foot, not on the heel. If you go on the heel more, you'll feel the stretch more in the back of the knee. If you kind of allow yourself to lean forward and use the poles to hold you and go more to the ball of the foot, you'll feel the stretch more down the back of the leg, more the hamstring area. Good. Bend the knees. Come and stand back up. Take the feet just a little wider. Do the same thing. Butt goes back slightly and then roll onto the ball of the feet. Your heels are still on the ground. Just feel the pressure points on the ball of your feet. There you go. Oh, it feels so good. Good. And come and stand back up. Now we do another stretch today. Take your right foot behind, bend both knees, and then push forward. So I'm here. I'm going to push forward into here. I'm moving my hip forward. Feel the stretch in the hip flexor at the front here. If I'm back, I don't feel it so much. But as soon as I push my pelvis forward in this position, I feel the stretch just down the front. There you go. Good. Come back. Take the left foot behind, bend both knees. Now push the pelvis forward again. I've gone back into here. I've bent both knees. Now I push the pelvis forward. As I push the pelvis forward, you feel that stretch down the front of your leg. There you go. Excellent. Good. Come and stand back up. Now give me 10 butt kickers. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stretching out the front of the quad. Nine. 10, good, shake those legs out. Now what I want you to do is let go of the poles if you feel comfortable, if not, bend your knees really slightly, but so slightly, but let the muscle relax. So what I want you to do is just shake that muscle. Just shake it and just loosen it up, change sides. Take the left hand, just shake that muscle. I can feel that muscle nice and easy, just loosening up. There you go, and give me 10 more butt kicks. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. Stand about shoulder width apart. Take your fingers. Take your hands off of the poles. Just run your fingers in here. Just loosen them up. Now grab and let go. So again, not too hard. You're not grabbing tight. We're just loosening up the finger movements. Now interlock your fingers. Turn the hands down and just push them down. Feel a nice little stretch in those fingers. Again, you've been holding onto the poles. So you want to make sure now release it and just stretch and release it and just stretch. This will help again to loosen up the um, ligaments that are going through your fingers. That's tendons going through there just nice and easy. And the muscles that again engage them to work to fire through them, through the tendons, just to stretch them out. So again, we work against the natural tendency to want to squeeze. We've got to make sure the supplement stays in there. Good. Next thing I want you to do is just roll your wrists out. Just go around and around. So again, flexibility is critical. Having been a professional dancer, I understood. And that was part of how I was able to create the 60 up balance board was being to just roll them around now, understanding the importance of suppleness and the freedom of movement of muscles and joints to have the ability to be balanced and feel confident to go into movements. Good. Shake your hands out. Let's just roll those shoulders back. We're almost done. There you go. And roll them forward. Feeling good. There you go. Good. Take your arms, cross them over. See if you can hold on to those shoulders and just bend forward. Give yourself that little hug. Giving yourself that self-love. A great job doing the work today. Um, and change the arms over. And when I say doing the work, this is so that you can go and have fun. You do the training. It's not always the most fun, although I always enjoy it because you're here. But again, this is about doing the discipline work of working on your balance and strength of movement to have the freedom to go play. And that's the end of the class today. Very, very simple. Thanks so much for being here and, um, and sticking it out. Um, again, this is just preparing you for everyday life and activities. Um, one of the things that my mum said, you always had a great laugh with Jenny. Um, <laughs> you, you plan to come out and see your, your sons one day. Um, yeah, I think Jenny's son, last time I met him, he was living down in, uh, I'm trying to think, um, Pacific Palisades was the last time that I saw Chris down there. So I um, hope he's doing great and love to the family in there, Jenny. And hopefully we can all get together um, and, and celebrate. Uh, Bob, you're back. Sorry, great you're back, Bob, right at the end of it. Surprise, surprise. Um, but you can always go back and watch this later on. It will be saved to Facebook. And thank you all so much for being here and being part of it. Tammy, thanks so much again. Such a simple exercise in here. Um, and really appreciate you being here all the way from the East Coast. Um, I know it's afternoon there now. But Tammy, thanks. If I can ever help all of your clients and um, people that I know you work so hard to help achieve their freedom in life of movement, please let me know. Um, if you could, uh, if anybody wants to see Tammy's teaching as well, you can look at Drum Latte, L-A-T-T-E. She teaches great movement classes um, using drumsticks and how to move and create in beats. And it's just a lot of fun, a super high energy. You'll actually see her on KTLA coming up as well. Um, but she's done fantastic for so many people of movement. So again, feel free to see Tammy on here. You can click on her um, picture and then that will take you to her workouts as well that she does. Again, fantastic. Um, <laughs> Betsy, um, as a first Diane, thank you so much. I'm glad it's helpful because all I want to do is help you have the freedom to do whatever you want. So helpful is always great. Uh, Betsy, thanks so much for being here. I know you've gone from, from starting with us to like super high end um, workouts and kicking butt. And so I, I appreciate you being here on Tuesdays and understand because you're the professor, you understand the importance of basics and foundation always. Again, very different workouts, much more explanatory and understanding the brain and the body interaction. And once you understand it more, the more you understand it, the more you'll find the ability and power to be able to go back and, and do so many more things in life. It's happened with Bob, right? Bob, you'd always go into here um, 
and Bob will always tell you, it wasn't just the physical improvement. It was, in, in fact, for me, it was more Bob's enthusiasm and belief in today and tomorrow and years to come that changed where sometimes you think, I'm not going to maybe uh, be around for that much longer. It's unbelievable to see the changes because time is in your hands when you take care of time. Um, Larry, sorry about the crow mix up. <laughs> Larry, get back out on the golf course, mate, and invite Bob out. I'd love to see you two compete with each other. You, you know that Bob Eubanks actually played in the Pro-Am and made the cut uh, on the golf course. Uh, playing back then. Bob, just tell me who your, your uh, pro partner was on there when you made the cut. But congratulations, and I know both of you share the love of golf. There you go. Oh, L-A-T-E. I don't know why I thought L-A-T-T-E, Tammy. Thanks for um, saying that L-A-T-E with a an accent over the top. Let's not talk about accents because all of you have accents, apart from my mum and Jenny, um, because we just are who we are and you guys have accents. <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, Tammy aired already. Oh, it, it's already been on, on KTLA. Well, even more reason to go back. Look, how was it, Tammy? I hope that it was fantastic. Um, they, uh, <laughs> I'm just seeing your comment, Larry. Um, how was it, Tammy? I hope it was absolutely fantastic. I didn't get to see it, but hopefully you can post a link. I will feel free to share a link of it here on, um, on, uh, the 60 up private page. I'd be happy to, to, uh, let people see that because it's such a great program. Um, Denise, you're ready for the rest of the day. Have a good day, Dan, everyone. Thanks so much, Denise. You have a beautiful day as well. Um, and can't wait for, uh, for to hear your constant success stories and, and being such an inspiration to so many. And Larry, it should have been the killed more by trucks than by cars because they could warn on cars. Larry, you're 86 and you're like a 36 year old that energy, that passion, that, that personality. So keep that going. And in some ways, it's actually funnier that you messed it up than the actual joke itself. So 86, it, uh, tell the same joke when you're 88 and uh, I'll still be laughing. Thanks, mate. Molly Ann, um, uh-oh. She said, thanks for the peak at nice weather. You're bracing for snow tonight in the Western New York. Thanks for being here all the way from New York and stay warm. Yeah, we're having uh, beautiful weather out here. They say it's going to drop very quickly, but it isn't going to go to New York style. So. Uh, it will be, uh, again, I wish you the best. I love New York. I had some great memories. I was able to go out there. I shot three movies out in New York and met some incredible people. I stayed on Bleecker Street, um, Bleecker Street, which was in uh, Manhattan, and going out and walking every day and getting to feel the energy of such a difference in New York. It reminded me very much of a, um, a foreign accent, London in so many ways, but loved it out there. So I said my best to New York. Um, so Tammy, you said uh, you think it's already been, it was pre-recorded in Pennsylvania at their sister station. So you'll let us know or you go ahead and post it. So thanks so much, all of you. Mum, you're the last one that I see on here. Love to you. Love to everybody. Have a fantastic rest of the Tuesday. Um, don't forget Debbie's tomorrow. I'm back on Thursday with a much higher level workout. And uh, Debbie will be back on Friday with both Kathy and Debbie have fantastic workouts. I drank some water. It went down the wrong way, finally. So love to you all. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Thanks so much for being here with me. And I will see you back here on Thursday. Don't forget, leave messages. Let me know what I can help you with, what you want work on. It could be anything from strength training to uh, stamina work to um, just movement exercises, stretching. Let me know. Leave messages. And I'm here. And for all of those of you on YouTube, thanks so much. Feel free to reach out as well. Love to you all. Bye-bye.